I found a free worldwide queer cable station for you all and I'm going to cover 11 films and documentaries worth checking out on the site. The name of this cable channel is Reverie. It's a company that deals exclusively in LGBTQ plus content. It streams online, has an app for your phone and can be watched via TiVo plus among other places. They have five live 24-7 channels, one which is focused on female identified content called Reverie Her, as well as Reverie Brazil, Reverie Latinx, Reverie News and finally Reverie LGBTQ+. They then have a library of on-demand content too that doesn't require a login for the time being. Most of it, amazingly, is free with ads, with some on-demand content for subscribers only, but you can usually catch it live on one of their channels. You can even sign up for a free account and set a reminder to tune in. The reason for it being free, in fact, is pretty awesome because they understand that not everyone can have a gay monthly subscription showing up on their credit card statement because not everyone is safe to be out. Now, while the catalogue is not the most robust, here are some offerings worth checking out. Jamie Babbitt, director of But I'm a Cheerleader, made this 2015 comedy with Natasha Lyonne playing gay as Martha and Audrey Plaza as her love interest. Martha is trying to support her sister after coming out of rehab for sex addiction and things quickly go sideways in a screwball kind of way when they wind up with a dead body to deal with. The movie is full of faces you'll recognize with Judy Greer as a sister, Molly Shannon who gated up on Wild Nights with Emily and even a quick cameo from Clea Duval along with others. While the resolution of the body didn't hit the spot for me, the movie stayed true to what it was about, namely the sisters' relationship, which was a strong point of the film. While the gay love story is not the primary focus, the movie is still pretty gay, especially with one of the set pieces, which included a women's baseball league convention, and as we know, baseball is a hot spot for lesbianism. That punched up the gay a few notches, for sure. And then, of course, there is Audrey Plaza. Need I say more? The same year Addicted to Fresno came out, Angry Indian Goddesses was making its debut too. This movie focuses in on a group of friends who have come together at a holiday house in Goa for an unexpected wedding. The groom? Well, that's kept a secret for the first half of the film for very gay reasons, essentially pivoting the film around sapphic love. While each of them are dealing with their own things, one of the major themes revolves around the modern issues faced by Indian women. At times, the film feels like it's on a soapbox and the extended time spent on the girls vibing together felt a little long for me, but the chemistry between the actresses helped smooth over those bumps somewhat. The film's twist, however, given the tone of the rest of the film, is unexpected and it makes for a wild, final act. Now, you may have noticed that country music is not exactly teeming without sapphic singers, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. Back in 2011, Shelley Wright, a successful country singer of the 90s and early 2000s, released the documentary Wish Me Away, which followed her public coming out. The secret had been eating her up inside for years, too scared to be honest about who she was because she belonged to one of the most conservative parts of the music industry, who tend to have pretty specific ideas about gay people. Hiding this for so long had some serious mental health impacts to the point that she found herself with a gun in her mouth because of it, and it made her realize that she couldn't hide anymore. I watched this a very long time ago and read her book, and it's a story that stuck with me over the years, so it's a delight to find this available for free. Go check it out. The Feels is a 2017 indie comedy about a group of friends meeting to celebrate the bachelorette party for Andy and Lou who are set to marry each other. While the ladies seem perfect for each other, Lou has a secret, namely that she has never had an orgasm before, not even with Andy. When Andy and the friends find this out, it spins the weekend into a new direction, forcing Andy and Lou to confront some truths about themselves and their relationship. There's some good character-driven comedy in there, and Constance Wu of Fresh Off the Boat and Crazy Rich Asian fame is an obvious draw. I think this is also on Netflix, but why not support the channel that is all about queer content? The documentary It's a Match is one I've been wanting to watch for a while because I remember seeing a Tumblr post rolling around about this extraordinary story and was always curious to know more. I was delighted to find it on Reverie. It follows Alana and Laurie who match for a date on Tinder. A romance quickly blossoms, but there is a catch. Alana has been on the transplant list for five years waiting for a kidney due to her lupus. This condition has also affected her heart and requires her to be on dialysis for 10 hours a night. Laurie secretly got herself tested to see if she might be a match so that she could donate one of her kidneys, and she was. The documentary follows the two of them in the lead up to and through the operation. 
There are other films that I'm looking forward to checking out, like To the Stars, the 2020 story of a girl dealing with bullying in 1950s Alabama and what looks like the new girl who becomes her friend. Margaret Cho's stand-up comedy special, Psycho, and The Pearl, a documentary about four trans women coming out later in life. There are also a few offerings that I've spoken about before on my channel. Boy Meets Girl, a delightful comedy about a bisexual trans woman waiting to hear about design school over summer. I've talked about this on my top 20 list and many other videos since. A Million Happy Nows, a woman who is diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's and how she and her partner navigate the diagnosis, which makes it onto my Woman Love Woman and Disability video from earlier this year. Appropriate Behaviour, which I've also mentioned on my top 20 favourite films and I've talked about writer, producer, director and actor Desiree Akavan in my top filmmakers video earlier this year and her story an award-winning web series about two trans women one of whom is bi and she meets a journalist that wants to interview her which made it onto my top 10 web series and other videos since if you want to get access to more free sapphic film and tv options check out the list on your screen and until next time lady lovers